Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week we have been talking about what faith is, and in that also we are looking at what faith does. And we saw that faith is now, faith is agreeing with God, saying what God has declared about us, saying the same thing as God and declaring it is so now it is done. It is finished. Also, we saw that faith takes or faith is taking. And we saw that the Greek word in the New Testament that is usually translated receive or received actually means to take, to take with the hand, to take possession of, to lay hold of and to seize and that of that, which when taken hold of is not let go. So we saw that faith takes. Now today I want to go on and talk about how faith comes and where faith begins, how faith comes and where faith begins. Now let's first of all, see, that faith begins where the will of God is known. Let me say that again. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So faith begins by knowing the will of God. There's a great man of God who's now in heaven. His name is F.F. F. Bosworth wrote a great book called Christ the Healer. And he wrote in his book, and this was in the early 1900s, and he said, it is impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing which we are not sure God offers because the power of God can be claimed only where the will of God is known. Now, let me stop there just a second before I go on and take a look at that statement again. It is impossible to boldly claim by faith. So it is not difficult. It's impossible to do what? Boldly claim by faith. Now, notice we were talking this week about Hebrews 4.16, come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So there is a boldness that faith has, and that is in taking what God offers. Receiving means to take. And we saw that to take means to claim, to claim possession, to take possession of. So he's saying it is impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing which we are not sure God offers. Not sure. Now, I want you to notice that word that those words not sure. You see, the words not sure show there is doubt. And we're going to be talking about that later. But. Your faith will go only as far as the point that you have confidence and your confidence is in knowing the will of God. So when you don't know the will of God, then it is impossible to have confidence to claim what you're asking for. So not being sure that God is offering something is going to stop faith. It will stop faith. Faith will not work. It will be impossible to have faith when you are not sure God is offering something. And he went on to say, because the power of, of God can be claimed. There it is again, claimed to take, to claim, to seize, take possession of the power of God can be claimed only where the will of God 
is known. He goes on to say, faith begins where the will of God is known. So that right there, we see the beginning point, the beginning point of faith. The beginning point for faith is where the will of God is known or knowing the will of God. And as he goes on to say, for example, regarding healing, he said, if it is God's will to heal only some people, some of those who need healing, then no one has any basis for faith unless they have a special revelation that they are among the favored ones. Faith must rest on the will of God alone, not on our desires or wishes. That's important. A lot of people are praying to God, bringing to God, begging, as we said yesterday, having your Hands out to God, palms upward. It's in a begging posture and a begging mentality. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please. I want. I need. I desire. Bringing to God your desires and needs in a begging attitude will not produce consistent results There are occasions when God moves mercifully in our ignorance. We have seen that. But that is not appropriating and using the spiritual law of the kingdom called the law of faith, which is guaranteed to bring results every time because it is a spiritual law. It always works all the time for everyone when it is used correctly. And so we can have our needs met and our prayers answered every time, but it will not happen in a begging attitude, just crying out our desires. I need, I need, I want, I want. So as he said here, Faith must rest on the will of God alone, not on our desires or wishes. Then he said, appropriating faith is not believing that God can, or let me just say, not only believing that God can, but that God will. Not only believing God can, but believing God will. Now, a lot of Christians, they know God is all powerful and they know he can do anything they need. But their doubts lie in not knowing if God will do it. For them, let me show you an example of that, even in the ministry of Jesus. Do you remember in Matthew when there was the leper that came to Jesus? And the leper said in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now notice he said, if you are willing, if is a statement of question and doubt. Where was his question? Where was his doubt? In the willingness of Jesus to heal him. Because he said, you can make me clean. He was confident that Jesus had power and ability 
to heal him. He said, you can make me clean if you are willing. That's where so many Christians are today. They are confident God is all powerful. He can do anything, but they don't know if he will. That's why many Christians, when praying for their needs to be met, praying for healing, as they say, Lord, if it be your will, you can heal me. You can cleanse me, as this man said. You, if you will, if it is your will, Please heal me. Please meet my need. Notice the word if. It is a question and a doubt. So let me show it to you like this. If you can imagine a a line in front of you and the beginning point of that to your left, because we read left to right, your faith will go across that line only up to the point where there is a question or a doubt. And at that point, faith stops. That question must be answered before faith can continue. Let me say that again. If you can imagine a line, faith is moving along that line until it reaches a point where there is a question or a doubt. At that question, faith stops. That question must be answered before faith can continue working. That's why people don't get their prayers answered oftentimes when they're praying, Lord, if it is your will. Lord, if it is your will, then heal me, meet my need, do this in my family. Those prayers are often unanswered because They are prayed in doubt, not in faith. That is not any time you are saying, Lord, if it be your will. That is a statement of questioning and doubt. There is no confidence. Faith is confidence. So those prayers are going to be hindered. They will not have the power of faith to bring them to pass. So that goes back to our statement. Faith begins where the will of God is known. You must know the will of God. It is okay to say, Lord, is it your will? But don't stop there. Find the will of God. Because it is only in knowing. Knowing is confidence. Knowing the will of God that you can have confidence and faith to ask and to claim, to seize and to lay hold. Of something because you know it is God's will. Hallelujah. In 1st John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. 1st John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence. Confidence is faith. So you could say, This is the confidence we have. In approaching God, that if we ask anything according 
to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. We know, we know, we know absolute certainty. This is something we know. What do we know? We know that we have. We know that we have now. It is done. It is so. It is finished. What we asked of him. How do we know that? If we ask anything according to his will. Well, then read that sentence, those verses in the opposite. If we don't know that we are asking according to his will, then we don't have confidence in approaching God and we don't know that we will have what we ask. You see that? So 1 John 5, 14 and 15 are saying the same thing, that faith begins where the will of God is known. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If that, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we have to know that we are asking according to his will. Amen. Amen. You see, God said, in Hosea 4, 6. Now I've used this verse before. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. That is the number one reason why Christians fail to receive from God fail to receive answers to their prayers. God said it. He told us why. The number one reason why is Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Now, I've said this before. In lack of knowledge, there are two key or main areas of lack of knowledge. One area, the first area of lack of knowledge is not knowing what God's will is or what God promises or what God has given. Remember, grace is God's arm extended to you, giving you everything you need. That's God's grace. But if you don't know what is given to you, then you will never take it and appropriate it. I mean, just think of someone who has been given an inheritance, but they don't know it. So their great aunt died and left them $10 million, but they don't know that they were in her will and that they were given that $10 million. If they don't know it, then they will live their life never receiving it and appropriating it. There's a true story that I've heard several times and I've heard it for a long time now and it took place quite a long time ago. But I heard this was a true story that there was a woman who was a maid servant to the queen. And the queen, as I recall in the story, um, had passed away. And the, this lady maid servant had been released from service, dismissed after the passing of the queen. So this lady maidservant was dismissed. She was very poor because she had only worked in the palace. She had no possessions of her own. 
So when she was dismissed, she went and lived by herself in a tiny shack, bare and cold, empty and almost starving to death, owning nothing, just barely surviving. One day she was sick and somebody called the doctor. The doctor went into her home to visit her. And while he was in her home, he saw a piece of paper hanging on her wall, just stuck up there, perhaps by a nail. And he went over to that piece of paper and read it. After he read it, he was dumbfounded and amazed. He turned to the woman lying sick on the bed, almost starving to death, cold and shivering in a cold, bare shack. And he asked her in amazement, what are you doing here? Don't you know what this paper says? And she said, oh, no, that was given to me by the queen. It's very, it was very special to her. She said, but I don't know how to read. I can't read. And the doctor read it to her and said, this paper that is given to you by the queen and sealed by the queen's emblem says that you are supposed to be cared for by the royal treasury in the palace for the rest of your life. Why are you in this shack, almost starving and freezing? You see, she did not know what was given to her. Therefore, she could not receive and appropriate what was given to her. She lived without it. In ignorance. And that's the same with uh, true stories that people have been given inheritances of great amounts of money, and yet they were never made aware of it and they never received it. So we cannot receive from God what we don't know he has given to us. So the first area of lack of knowledge where God said, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. The first area of lack of knowledge is not knowing what is given. What God's will is. What is promised. The second area of lack of knowledge is not knowing how to receive it and appropriate it. So that's what we're talking about in this series of faith is one of the keys is faith. How do you receive it and appropriate it? But you cannot receive and appropriate something in your life that you don't know God has given. You can never have strong faith To believe you receive or take, lay hold, possess something. If you don't positively, confidently know that it is God's will for you to have it. Amen. Now, we are out of time. Actually, I'm going to continue this as we talk more about knowing the will of God. Because some people think and believe, and they've even been taught that we cannot know the will of God. There are many Christians who say, well, the will of God is beyond finding out. I remember I was teaching in another country and I actually had finished the message about receiving from God his blessings, his healing, his provisions, and knowing that it is God's will for our life. After I finished, the pastor stood up 
And he basically negated everything I said because he said, well, you know, we just never know what God's will is. You see, that is ignorance of God and his word and his will. And millions of Christians are saying the same thing. Well, you just never know what God's will is. Well, come back as we answer that question from the word of God. You can know the will of God. Now, thank you for joining me today. And I want to invite you again to be a partner with us in this radio ministry. If this radio program is blessing you. And as I've said in the last couple of weeks, we are looking for more support for this radio program. We need to have an increase in order to keep it as a Monday through Friday half hour radio program. So if you would like to see this radio program continue as a Monday through Friday half hour program, then we encourage you to support and partner with us today. So you can write to us at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 509, East Lake, Colorado, 80614. Or you can go to our website at VictoriousFaith.co, Victorious Like a Champion, V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S, Faith, F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O Like Colorado, and go to the giving page where you can give online. And as always, we bless your seed and we command it to be fruitful and increase and multiply in Jesus name. And we agree with you for your victories, breakthroughs, answers to prayer, harvest in Jesus name. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.